<laughs> light shine bright. Hey, where we go? Jenny's question. We ready? <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> we're alive. <laughs> Jim just surprised us. Well, good morning, beloved. Thank you for joining us this morning in Sunday Fellowship. You caught us by surprise. But um, we thank you for being a part of fellowship this morning. We are, we've been joined by our dear sister. Uh, what's your name now? Sister. 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 I got sister. Sister Jenny. Sister, sister. That's right. Sister, sister. We got our dear sister Jenny Luckinville, uh, Curtis's wonderful wife. Uh, uh, spiritual leader, he's catching up. That's why we have her up here instead of him. <laughs> They're a well-joined match. Honey. Yes, they are. But uh, nice of you to join us this morning. We are going, if you got the email yesterday, I was re- expecting to get a lot of static because I, I got the email out yesterday by 5 something. 5, what was it, Jim? 545. 545, something like that. That's, that's unheard of. 5.45, got the email. I didn't get it at 10.30, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. Sorry. Three in the morning. Three right. in the morning, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we are going to start with prayer. You want to pray for us, honey, as we okay. get started? Gracious Father, I thank you for bringing us together this morning. I, I thank you for this opportunity um, to be here and have those around the world joining us. Pray for your word and your understanding in Christ. Um, deeper understanding of who we are as your sons we thank you in christ amen amen we got a couple of guests with us this morning we got uh sylvia's and jim's daughter one of the twins beth beth with us this morning Mm -hmm. we have uh our grandson jeremy recent graduate of Loyola university uh uh, a former uh uh division one basketball player He's not anymore. Didn't get the big contract. <laughs> I don't think he wanted the big contract. I don't think he wanted the big contract. Man, if I was six foot ten. What? Six nine. They lied. Six nine? Okay, well, I wanted to be six foot ten. Maybe he'll because I grew late, so I just went. let his hair grow out, honey. It'll be six ten. <laughs> Oh, my wife, your grandmother. She's, she's it's funny. It's the truth. She's yeah. funny. He knows. Anyway, we've got uh, wonderful uh, visitors with us, so thank you guys for joining us this morning. Just thought I thought it in there. Jenny is with us this morning because Curtis gave me some inside information, gave me some pillow talk. <laughs> <laughs> their pillow talk, not, their, their not pi- yours and Curtis's. Yeah, yeah, their oh. pillow talk, not mine. <laughs> statement that you know we've been talking to you guys about desensitization to the person of Christ and the spirit of fear and so uh, he said you know Jenny really had a good question he said you know she wanted to know about good fear you know I mean Dave really hadn't explained could you could you give us that yeah so um, I come from a a a medical background like your wife and yourself and you know I've always learned and we know that sometimes we have a fear in us for instance, uh, if you're in the woods and a bear is coming after you, there's a certain amount of fear that's built in, mm-hmm. and uh, you kind of go into that fight or f- flight mode. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just a little uh, had a question about the the. It could just be a matter of definition of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, so how does that compare to the fear that the Bible talks about? And in, 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 for instance, the, you should be. F- Fear God mm-hmm. and fear. So I, it, that was kind of my question. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's in Psalms 110 where it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- let's, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> so Jenny's question is, is really good. I did a message. We was talking about that uh, before we got started. We did a message several years ago, and it's on the website in the audio files. It was an audio message before we started videoing. We did an audio message called the Anatomy and Physiology of Fear. Mm-hmm. And it came from several years before when the father had pre- revealed this to us. It was, back then, we used to call it the fear factor. And it was really good. I mean, it, 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 she kept on me, you really got to write this down. You really got to get this down. So 
But uh, it went from that to, to the anatomy and physiology of fear. Uh, fear drives 99.9% .9 of the humanity. Fear affects 99.9% .9 of humanity. Everyone in here, uh, everyone listening, you, you make decisions every day based in fear. Now, I say 99. It's really, uh, I could back it off and say 95%. That leaves some of you room to, to feel like you don't make decisions in fear. So I'll say 95%, 95 to 96% of the decisions we make every day are fear-based decisions. You can come upon humanity in Genesis chapter 3. It came. It wasn't there at first because we know that it was in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 where Adam disobeyed God, ate of the fruit of the true knowledge of good and evil, and God was looking for him, the Bible says, and he said, Adam, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice, and I was afraid. Now, how many times did he hear God's voice before that? Right? So that wasn't built into us. That, didn't, that happened in disobedience. Mm -hmm. That happened in disobedience. So fear was an added thing, and that fear was the means by which Satan, or the serpent, gained access to us. And from that moment on, our decisions have been made, human decisions are made based in fear. Fear from whatever. Now, as we get into the lesson, Jenny's thing is saying, you know, when you're in the woods and a bear's coming, there's this fight or flight. Yes, that's a, a, what, what some would call a visceral response. But if a bear's coming, you don't have to be afraid to know you're no match for a bear. To me, knowledge should tell you you need to get out of the way. Not fear. <laughs> Knowledge says, that's a bear. I'm a human. We don't mix. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we don't necessarily have to worry about fear. That should be some education. There should be some knowledge going on in that. Well, I was just going to say, you know, your heart starts to go really fast because you get adrenaline pumping. And that's our protective thing to get us to go really fast to leave, you know, but to that's, run. But that's, that's still fear. And I'm, I'm saying. It is fear. I'm, I'm, so what I'm saying is you don't have to have the fear to respond to something you've learned about. You follow? Yeah. But the so if you're taught, if you're taught, look, when you're in the woods and you see a bear, bears are not always uh, helpful to humans. <laughs> You can become a bear sandwich. I mean, you can become a sandwich to a bear, so you really need to leave the area. You don't have to be afraid to leave. You can say, hey, look, that doesn't look like it's something I need to, to be involved with, so I'm leaving. For instance, kids, young people doing drugs. You don't have to be afraid, right, to smoke, to do crack. Or, you don't have to be afraid of that. You say, hey, that's not for me. I, I need to, that, that's not what I want to do to my body. So I'm leaving. That's no, there shouldn't be any fear involved in that because you've been taught it's not good for your body. So we have categorized, which I'll get to in the lesson, fear into two categories. The good fear and the bad fear. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> no, I'm a sandwich. I'm sorry, I couldn't pass. Oh, pa that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pass that up. I just... <laughs> So we've, we've broken down fear into something that makes sense to us. And by doing that, we have made fear a part of us, which wasn't from the beginning. Now, if it wasn't from the beginning, it's a part of us now. There's a, there should be a breakdown in that. What happens in 2 Corinthians 5.17? What? 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in Christ. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. That includes fear. All things have what? Become new. So when do we make the transition from being old to new? Well, if we categorize fear as being good and bad, we keep it to ourselves. We have to hang on to it because it makes sense. But in the new creation race believer, that doesn't make sense, at least to me, by the revelation of Christ. Right, Curtis? It should not be a part of who I am as the son of God. It's a part of the body I live in, it can, and if we're not careful, it will rule over you, and every decision you make, every relationship you have, everything you do is based in some kind of fear that guides you or, quote, protects you. Well, what does that do for the protection of God? Oh. So now I'm depending on something to act inside of me, and if, if the alarm goes off, I run. If the alarm doesn't go off, I don't run. So I'm not, I'm not operating by knowledge now. I'm operating by my feelings. 
And that's dangerous. So let's, let's look at this. Let's look at the anatomy and physiology of fear in our notes. Honey, you want to? Now, I put this first verse. <laughs> this first verse might not make sense, but hopefully over time it will. Read that for us, please, honey. Romans 3, 3 through 6. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true. For every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our righteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. Then how shall I do? How shall God judge the world? Okay. Uh, that passage really has to do with our faith. But I can, I can, we're going to try to uh, let you see how this passage relates to fear. <laughs> I'm ready. Shall God, be, okay. Uh, shall their unbelief make the faith of, uh, of God without effect? Shall your non-love make the love of God ineffective because love is going to be the key in fear. Okay, let's go on. Let's start by looking at the definition of anatomy and physiology. Anatomy, structural makeup, especially of an organism or any of its parts, the outer form. What then is the anatomy of fear? What is its structure? Romans 8, 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 15. And then Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. No, no, no. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Okay. <clears throat> These two verses bring out a, a good, especially Romans 8. I mean, both of them are really good. But Romans 8, Romans 8 uh, covers a, 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 an idea that God has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear. That word spirit of bondage and the word fear are synonymous. He hadn't given us a spirit of fear to bring us into bondage, or he didn't give us a spirit of bondage to bring us into fear. Either way, fear then becomes a spirit. So the anatomy of fear is spiritual. Right. It's spiritual. And because it's spiritual, <clears throat> you can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't touch it. Used biblically in Hebrews or Greek, in Hebrew or Greek, it will always refer to something or someone which affects or attacks humanity. Since the anatomy and structure is spiritual, it can't, can't be seen, touched, tasted, or felt with the flesh. The flesh can respond only to its presence. Mm. We liken the spirit of fear to carbon monoxide gas. It's colorless, odorless, tasteless, and invisible. We only respond to its presence with serious side effects. We'll come back to this later. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about that, Jenny. What do you think? Well, I, I can see that, I can see that uh, where this is all coming from, but, oh, sorry. Um, okay, let's just say, again, I, I, I can see where it's all spiritual, mm -hmm. but say somebody's coming at you with a knife. Okay. And I'm fearing that's going to hurt. Okay. That's, that's, I'm still stuck on that. But do you have to fear that that's going to hurt? You know that's going to hurt. I know <laughs> that's going to hurt, but right. it still so, scares but, me. So, so, but you're afraid how bad that going to hurt. I mean, that could be pretty Again, bad. That's, that's still... Uh, A knowledge thing. Right. Okay. You, we responded to knowledge, but yet we call it fear. Yeah. So it's a definition issue. Gotcha. It's a little deeper than that. The fear of not having fear... <laughs> stick with me. The fear of not having fear makes us afraid, <laughs> if that makes sense. We're afraid not to have the fear because we perceive that if we don't have the fear, we're going to get hurt. Well, if somebody's coming at you with a knife and you don't protect yourself, mm -hmm. you're going to get hurt anyway. And you know that a knife, a person coming at you with a knife, is not a good thing. I mean, you know that. You don't have to be afraid <clears throat> to respond to that. I mean, either running, 
I'm running because I know that's not a good situation. I don't have to be afraid. I can know that I can't handle it. I mean, you got a, a, a woman that's going up against a, a six foot seven, six foot eight guy, 240 pounds. She knows that, you know, unless she's been trained to handle that, if she Example: If a house is burning up mm -hmm. and my child is in that house, mm -hmm. there is no fear. I'm going to do. I'm going to run in and grab my child. Right. There is no fear. So. You're, it's the same. It is it, the same aspect. Is that I know something is happening, and my knowledge should take effect. Either my knowledge of the situation on my lack of knowledge of the situation, but I know something and I need to operate. We in the in Christ message, we have come to understand, Sylvia, that we operate by knowledge. Our basis is to operate by knowledge, not necessarily ignorance, but our basis is to operate by knowledge. And in that knowledge, we have victory. And that knowledge is the knowledge of Christ. So, uh, It's easier for us to grab a hold, and, and believe it or not, and, 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 and Jenny's point is well taken, guys. Because we've been held captive by fear so long, which we'll get to in a second, we are delusional. And remember the definition of delusional? No matter how much uh, uh, it is... Uh, uh, how much evidence you have to the contrary. How much evidence you have to the contrary, you still will not believe. So we were taken, humanity was taken hostage or captive by fear from Genesis chapter 3 forward. And so it's much easier for us to want to, to wanna hold on to something, but really we're not holding on, it's holding on to us. And the only way for us to be free of fear is understand who we are in love. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, let's continue to read. So what you're saying is in really... No, I say what I want to say, what you're saying. <laughs> in really bad situations that most people would say they'd be afraid in, whatever that is, you know, death of a spouse or just a really bad situation. Mm -hmm. um, when you know who you are in the spirit, you hear the voice of the Father, and you know what to do in that situation. You trust him for the outcome. Even if you don't do anything, what happens to you, the peace of God that passes knowledge and understanding guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The peace that passes, what? Understand. Right. So, do I need to understand this? It says passes understanding, guards, which means it keeps fear from ruling inside of me in that situation. Mm -hmm. Most of us do not operate that way because most of us operate in the flesh. And in the flesh, that's where, we, that's where fear has its The first response dominance. is to panic, yeah. You no, know, usually it is. It doesn't have to be. Well, I'm just saying that that's, that's the 99% you're referring to. The first response is panic. The alarm goes off in the morning, panic happens. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I'm it, already it, late. I'm already <laughs> late. I mean, it does not have to be. And the more we have our mind renewed, the less and less that first response becomes spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Where when something happens, the first thing that comes to my mind, Father, what, what, what are you having? What, Father, Father, Father. That should be our first response. Mm -hmm. Instead, we, we get this, new, because we've been held captive so long, we, we are delusional. And the first thing, when fear happens, you have these these visions or these thoughts, these, these ideas that come to your mind, and in those thoughts you see these visions of how bad it's going to be or what's going to happen. And visceral takes over, and now we're ang we have anxiousness, anger. anxiety, anger. anger. We have all of these emotional responses to something that he's giving us and telling us this is going to happen. He doesn't know that. But he tells you that, you know what I mean by tell you, yeah. These visions come on and you see them and you say, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to be eaten alive. <laughs> or taken worry. advantage of. Or taken advantage of. That's a good one. So. I don't deserve this. Yes. 
Okay. Fear based. Let's go on. All right. Next, the physiology of fear. That is where we are, right? <laughs> yes. I next. kind of derailed us. Physiology, the way that living things or any of their parts function. How does the spirit function in this world and on humanity? His function is, oh, the spirit, I guess the spirit of the devil. I yes. should have filled that in. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, how does the spirit of the devil function in this world and on humanity? His function is to kill, steal, and destroy the heirs of salvation. This is John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have love, life, and they might have it more abundantly. Now let's go back. I told you Genesis chapter 3, right? What happened in Genesis chapter 3? With, with, with the serpent and, and the he man beguiled, and his wife? Beguiled Eve. Right? But what happened? God said what? 2.16. Of all the trees in the garden thou shalt eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what? Thou shalt not eat. Because in the day thou shalt eat of it, what? You will surely die. Now that's before the woman came forth. She wasn't there. So we know it was given to the man. It wasn't given to her. It was given to him. And, he, and God said, you shall surely die. So when the serpent came and attacked, uh, uh, addressed them, he addressed the flesh, the woman. You were bone of my bone and what? Flesh of my flesh. Right. So he addressed Adam's flesh. He's still addressing your flesh. Why? What happened when he addressed your flesh? He's got better, better hold The flesh is it. deceived. Yeah. And it partakes in things it should not partake. Why did she partake? Why did, what did he do? He gave her, introduced to the flesh, fear. God knows that the day you eat of this, you should not surely die. God knows something you don't. The flesh then takes on, wasn't necessarily a lie. God did know something they didn't know. But he didn't give it to the flesh. And what happened? Fear came in. Mm -hmm. God's not telling us something. God's not telling me something. She ate because of fear. She didn't, wasn't given to her, so she couldn't disobey. You find no verse that says Eve disobeyed. It says Eve was deceived. Mm -hmm. The woman was deceived. So fear brings about what? Deception in the flesh. She gave to a husband who was with her, and he did eat, and the eyes of them both were open. When fear comes in, you just won't see it that way. Even though it's present, you don't respond to it. Because remember, Adam did not respond to the serpent. He responded to his flesh. <laughs> we don't respond in spirit to, 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 to fear. We shouldn't. We respond to it in our flesh. Mm -hmm. And in your flesh is where you're taken captive. And once the flesh takes it and gives it to you, then you are held captive by the spirit of fear in your mind. So let's go on. Okay. This works through a process. Everyone is susceptible to the spirit of fear and his process and attacks. This process works through three portals of expression on humanity. It moves upon the human and seeks to take that person captive. 1 Timothy 2 and 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, spirit of fear, who are taken captive by him at his will. Now, that verse Paul says, it, he takes us captive by his will. At his will, yes. At his will. Which means, beloved, you really don't have a chance. <laughs> because it says, it didn't say not by your will. It says by his will. Take some captive, Beth, by his will. So that tells you something, that he has the ability to take any of us captive anytime he wants. Mm -hmm. He does. Okay, Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lives lifetime subject to bondage. Now let's, let's break that down. Let's break that down. Jenny, mm -hmm. it says, for as much as the children as us took part uh, or partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise himself took part of the same, which means Jesus put on a body just like you and I did 
a body of sin, but not a sinning body, right? See, right. we already know that. That through death, he, through death, through death destroyed him that had the power of death. Uh-uh. Fear. fear. Destroyed him that had the power of fear. So Jesus took on a body like you that so in his flesh he could operate at a level that we operate at, but he took the fear, the, 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 he took the, the, the place. Now, that's, 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 that's not good. I'm, 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 I'm using wrong terminology. Let me say He put on a body so that his flesh could be confronted with the very fear that we are confronted with in the flesh. And what did he do with that? He put that fear to death. Now, the problem with us is we don't want to die. We don't want to die as who we are biologically, physiologically. We don't want to die to the person that we see ourselves to be in the mirror. Oh, my God, look at that. Oh, man, I got some gray hairs here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All of this, uh, you know, you brush this hair, you, 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 you comb your hair, you brush your teeth. You're doing all this. You, get, you look your best. If you're ladies, you put on some little stuff here. This chapstick, okay? <laughs> we do all of this stuff to make the container we live in acceptable to us. And this container we live in is the means by which fear rules and reigns over us. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. Old things have passed away. What does that mean? That means the person that I, that I appear to be in my flesh died at the cross. I'm another person living in the same body I used to have. Nobody wants to receive that. I don't know too many people who receive that idea. No, 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 no. <laughs> who receive that revelation and understanding. Because we're too busy being who we are in the flesh to be anyone else. We talk about being in Christ. We talk about Christ living in me. We talk about being a new creation. That's a, that's a Bible verse. Eh? That's a memory verse. You remember that? that it, it, we teach that to kids at a young age. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. We, we give them that memory verse, and it takes, it takes the, the spiritual depth of that verse and makes it of non-effect. Because if I'm saying Christ is in me, then I'm saying I'm still the same person that has Christ in them. Versus... Not only is Christ in me, but because of that, I have become another person living in the same body I was biologically born in. That's a different understanding. When that happens, that separates you from the body you live in. And when the attack comes, you can see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have kept the union between the body we live in and us. And now fear rules and reigns. In other words, as, as my sister says, it, 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 isn't it good fear? No, we'll get to that in a second. Fear is fear, period. How about this? Jenny, you grew up Baptist. Plug for the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Sylvia grew up Meth uh, Presbyterian, right? Presbyterian? Methodist. Oh, my God, they need help. <laughs> 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 I think Rhonda was out in, 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 in Pentecostal circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Jeremy, did, well, I won't even go into that. Jim, you, Jim's your Jim. Jim's our resident Catholic. Our poster child for Catholicism. He's our poster <laughs> child for Catholicism. We're gonna get Jim here one of these days. But anyway, um, being that it, it, growing up Baptist, what, what 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 did you know as fear? Well. I never, I was never, I was never taught anything, uh, or if I was, I didn't understand it, other than something on a very superficial basis, scripturally. Mm -hmm. So to break down a scripture like this and to understand that, uh, I, I never understood this as a child growing up in the Baptist church. 
you know, you memorize scriptures, but to really understand and get into the depth of it, that never happened for me. Mm. So how do you take, if any man be in Christ, he's in creation, old things have passed away, all things have become new? Well, that really, honestly, that was not a popular verse in the Baptist church. Not The one know, you were in. The one I was in, yeah. 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 I mean, we did a lot of Old Testament stories oh, yeah. that, that and fits. things like that. That fits. I think they would have turned it around, though. That, that means you're going to get cleaned up. Could be. Or, you know, Jesus lives in my heart. Right. Well, you know, right. What, what does that mean to a child? I, I never really quite got my head around that. How about this? <laughs> Jesus, Christ, Jesus lives in my heart. How about this one? Jesus died for your sins. Four-year-old? Five-year-old? I don't sin. You know, that's what I was they, thinking. Well, they have no clue what sin means anyway. But So we, we, we bombard them with the idea because we want them to get saved because we want to protect their salvation. Again... Where's that originate? Yeah. Fear. 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 In fear. Even confusion, I think, uh, is another part of the devil's toolbox. Because when I grew up, too, I also was told, well, Jesus lives in your heart, but he's also sitting on the right hand of God. And I'm like, hmm, where is he? <laughs> is he there or is he here? Uh, so that was another big one. Yeah. <laughs> confusion. Confusion. Yeah, they yes. use, in fact, fear can breed confusion. Confusion is the presence of fear. Good point. Yeah. It is the presence of fear. It doesn't breed it. When it's there, what's happening is there's a response. So let, let, let's move on. So we got, we got the Hebrews four, the 2, 14, 15, right? Okay, let's move on. Psalms 27, 1, Now, three. I threw this in there for those of you who say I don't, like, I don't use the Old Testament. I just threw this in there. For those of you, because I have a lot of people tell me, David, you don't use a lot of Old Testament verses. Well, here it is, okay? And then you were talking about fearing God and stuff, so let's talk about this. Psalms 27, 1, 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Okay. Uh, now, uh, dear brother David is, is saying some great things here just to, 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 the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? So David is saying because God is his salvation, he, he changed those words and they'd be the same because they had the same meaning. They both had the same meaning. The, the writers uh, could put that. Though it host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. Though war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. So he's saying something he knows, something he knows, doesn't allow fear to, to rule me. over him. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? His knowledge then puts him in a place where fear does not what? Rule him. Right. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I what? Fear. Be afraid. There's knowledge working there. Though it whole shit of camp against me. A lot of things coming against me. What? My heart shall not fear. Mm -hmm. The war should rise against me. This will I be confident. So David is showing knowledge of God who did not live in him, but periodically came upon him, according to the Bible, came upon him from time to time so he could carry out the things God said before him. So with that came a knowledge base that he did not have to yield to the attacks of fear. Mm -hmm. okay? And this man didn't have Christ in him. What, what's more for you and I? Okay, let's move on. The portals are, you'd said above there were three portals. The par portals are the mind, the emotions, and the body. Fear expresses itself in our thinking, the mind, feeling, emotions, and actions on our actions or living, the body. The physiology of fear functions in the following process or stages. The illusion, the deception, the captivity, and the delusion. Mm -hmm. The intent is to desensitize desensitize humanity to person and their ultimate purpose intent and plan given to them by God he will still kill and destroy as many humans as he can through his power as the spirit of fear yeah I left that uh, yeah uh, Catherine didn't didn't uh, fill it in yeah you can fill it in it, it should be to it the intent is to de desensitize humanity to the person of Christ I can unto himself that we sit at the right hand of the throne of God in Christ Jesus from the moment 
<clears throat> uh, we receive him. We receive him. Okay. The illusion. What is the illusion effect? The illusion. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it all trickles down to everything, but it, I guess it starts with the mind and Correct. then it goes to our emotions and then we start getting it in the body. The, the illusion is whatever comes to your mind when stuff starts to happen. The illusion, uh, I'm going to lose my job. I see the way the boss has been looking at me lately. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, they don't like me, uh, they're talking about me. Well... Who said that? Unless somebody came and told you that the illusion of what you perceive in the mind through fear. Well, why are they talking about me? I don't care if they're talking about me. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. Why would I want to why would I want to live under the the why would I want to live under the the fear of being liked or disliked? Now I'm not telling you that it doesn't affect you when people kind of turn their back on you. They it, you know, you you want to be liked or but the fear of not being liked puts you in a place to have illusions that fear produces that takes your identity and puts it in the hands of someone else. Mm -hmm. God put, birth Christ, put Christ in us so we could be birthed as new creations. Why would I want to give that up to become something that somebody else says I am because they like or dislike. I, I mean, even if they like you. I like Jim liking me. But <laughs> I like him. Brother, I love, I love you. I love you, brother. Curtis, put his, give me a hug. But my identity is not based on them. And the fear of being rejected puts that identity at risk to what they perceive and what they do toward me. And it can even make you misperceive what they did. True. Fear, the illusion, attacks the mind. The minute you buy into it, now look, the illusion is not the fear. The illusion is what fear presents to you. Once you buy into the illusion, guess what? You buy into deception. Deception. Once you're in deception, you're already in a place where fear has a hold of you. Because bottom line is when you say, yeah, Curtis doesn't, I don't think Curtis likes me. I mean, he hadn't called me. I hadn't got a text message from him in six weeks, man. He'd been in the hospital the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, if I don't know that, what, my, what does the illusion tell me? It has to do with like me. You, right. has to do with me. And so once I buy into the illusion, I'm already deceived. As Catherine said, the brother was in the hospital. You worried about you. <laughs> and he's in the hospital. You see what I mean by the illusion and then the deception? And longer you, now, Catherine, let's use her example. He's been in hospital six weeks. Six weeks, this thing's getting worse and worse. The longer you're in deception, the deeper the fear grabs you, the deeper your thinking turns from anything else but you. And now you're getting mad at him. <laughs> or thinking about revenge on him. Uh, it could be. <laughs> I mean, see, people do that. See, brother, see where it comes? <laughs> see, see. <laughs> See, see what you've done? <laughs> you should have checked before you went in the hospital. I'd have known better. <laughs> but people do that. We laugh. People do, do that. They do. Because there's no knowledge working in them. If for a non-believer, that really is not much of a choice. Now, you can say, now listen to me. We can use rationalization. We can rationalize certain things that happen to us. We can rationalize. Fear can be rationalized. But the problem with rationalization is... Once you rationalize on one area of fear, it, because it's spiritual, it pops up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. you, people tell you, you, Jenny, you just need to face your fears. Trust God. <laughs> Trust God. <laughs> and face your fear. What happens? You got one thing you focus your attention on. The minute you do that, guess what happens? It pops out somewhere else. It's like water, pouring water in your hand. The more you can cup it as much as you want, but it's going to find a place to leak out. That leak spot is your mind trying to face fear psychologically. It does not work. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, 
the, the, the deception, it, if you stay in deception long enough, Beth, you become captive. Now, I like the definition of captivity. Captivity is under the control of another, but have the appearance of what? Independence. Independence. Most human beings are at that spot. They believe they're independent while they're in captivity. Because you can make decisions. Because you can do what you feel you need to do. But you're in captivity the whole while. And you're under the influence of another. You're under the influence of the spirit of fear. And those decisions you think you're making under independence is just, is just fear-based decisions. Day in, day out. Mm -hmm. You wake up, you run to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, you take your shower, you dry your hair, you put your clothes on, and you go out in the same manner as you went to bed. <clears throat> go to lunch, in fear. You get off from work, in fear. You come home, in fear. Because it's spiritual. And if, if it's only you that you know you in your flesh, you will continue that that treadmill day in and day out. How do you be a good how, how are you a good husband, Jim? How are you a good uh, father, Curtis? How are you a good mom, Beth? All that comes into play. And if you buy into it, being a good whatever, or I'm a bad mom, or I'm a bad dad, or I'm a bad whoever, either one of those is laced in fear. Through the illusion. Once you buy into it, you're hooked. The only way out, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> okay, on. we are, and then the delusion. Okay, uh, so we are. Oh, yes, right, and the delusion. But we already went to this. You want me to read that next sentence again? No. Okay, let's look at what appears to be good fear. This is Acts 2 and 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Acts 5, 5, and 11 things. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Mm -hmm. What did Ananias Anna nice do? <coughs> he lied. <coughs> <laughs> that makes Anna me nervous Ananias and Sapphira, uh, they promised that we're going to give some money. They're going to sell some land and give some money to the, to the church. <laughs> Oh, man, you're, that's you're, a good one for getting an offering, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Gave up the ghost. Okay. So they lied. They kept the money, and they, and, and they didn't give it. And Peter went to him and said, you know, you guys lied. So Ananias came first, and the husband, and he lied. And so Peter made a statement about him lying, and, and, and they caught him. And so he fell down and died, and his, and his wife came in later on, and she was looking for a husband, and he said the same thing to her and, and, and guess what she gave up the ghost too she gave up the ghost too <laughs> and so now think about this well let, let's finish reading I'm, I'm okay. gonna come back to that verse Acts 9 and 31 mm -hmm. then had the churches rest through let's see then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied mm-hmm Acts 19, 17, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Okay. We look at those, and we would call that good fear. Uh, many would tell you, it's, it, it's, it's biblical right there, brother. You, you, you can't do much with that. I mean, that's, that's Bible. Well, watching two people drop dead for not giving their offering. <laughs> I mean, that's fear. Is that good fear? <laughs> that's supposed to be good fear. Well, you see the results. What did the results say happen here? Hmm? I'm sure they started giving. <laughs> <laughs> it says, and many signs and many wonders and signs were done by the apostle. So what does it tell you about that fear? Remember. The definition for fear in this word, the Greek word is the same, is phobia. What we call phobia, you know? It de the, the definition does not change. The word does not change. I put in them. No. No. But we call that good fear. If, you, if you're preaching, you're preaching tithes and offerings, you're going to use it. I've heard this verse used, this passage used more than one time in a church service. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I've heard this. 
Don't be like that in and fire. If you pledge to give God your tithe, you need to give him the tithe because things, God will know, he knows how to get what he wants from you. <laughs> give me my wallet, honey. <laughs> it's going to get multiplied. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to give up the ghost. Well, maybe I got that insurance policy on you, so. I give mine, but you don't have to give yours. <laughs> Stuff like this, we call that good fear because we look at it as though the results was. Now, you got to remember something about these first few verses in Acts. The church then was in Jerusalem. So we're talking about a people who is Israel who lived in fear all the time. They did. They lived in fear all the time. But anyway, let's go, let's go on. Let's, let's keep going. Okay. The answer to fear... Uh, any fear is love. Mm -hmm. What we perceive as good fear or bad fear has the same answer and outcome. Yes. It's the same answer and it's the same outcome. God has the same answer and the same outcome for fear. Whether you classify it as good fear or bad fear. Because originally, we were not created with fear in us. It came at a specific time. Later on at the cross, he took care of that fear. And at a specific time when he put Christ in us, it ended the reign of fear and death. Okay, Ephesians 5 and 2. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us mm. and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. That took, Savor. That, took care of your, that took care of your fear. So keep going. Um, Ephesians 1 and 4, mm. according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. It didn't say before him in fear, though, did it? I just want to make sure. Okay, okay. You, Beth, you, you got that? Okay. We got that. Ephesians 3 and 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Good. And Ephesians 4, 15 through 16. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, let's pause uh, before we go to the next verse. Let's pause. I'm, I underline this verse, edifying of itself in love. There is no edifying in fear. No matter what you call it, good fear or bad fear, the edifying is always where? In love. In love. In love. Because there's a reason it's edifying. It's a reason it's in love. There's a reason. We'll get to that in just one minute. Let's look at this other verse right quick. Um, First Thessalonians 3 and 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. Oh, that's how we do it in one toward another, in love. Go ahead. And toward all men, even as we do toward you. Right. And then 1 John 4, 16 through 18. And we have known and believed that um, we have believed the love that God has to us. God is love. Now, let's, let's, wait, let's pause for a second. I underline the love that God has has to us. What love did God have to us? What love did God have to us? It's about giving his son, giving himself as his son. He did not give us the spirit of fear. That came by disobedience. So it says here, John says, we have known, that's knowledge at work, and believe. Because we know something, we now can what? Believe the love that God had to us. What is that? God is love. So the love he had toward us is himself. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. Let's stop. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. 
herein is our love made perfect or complete. Or another Greek word for that, definition for that is mature. But it's complete. Our love is complete because there's a union between God who is love and we are in him and he is in us. So therefore, it becomes the same love. And because there's a union, our love is not based on how we feel. Our love is not based on our emotions. Our love is based on a person who is that who now lives in me and now has become my love. Before we received God, before we received Christ, we did not love. Now, I know that's hard. People are always running around talking about, I love you, I love you. There's nothing wrong with that. You can say that. But most of the time, the definition of that word love, when human beings say it to one another, most of the time it's based on how they feel. Catch one of them, cuss one of them out and see what happened to you. What the? <laughs> do something they don't want you to do. What? Disappoint one of them. Disappoint one of them. See where that love comes from. Oh, man, I just love you. Just come on. Come on, give a brother some love. Uh-uh. Get out of my side. Uh-uh. I ain't calling you. I ain't going to text you. God <laughs> tells us in this in the day of judgment because, because what? As he is, so are so we. So are we world. where? Where? In this world. Can't be the next one because we're not there yet. Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment. The boldness doesn't come from you having a testimony. The boldness comes from you being in union with love. Your boldness is in your, in your union with love. That's where your boldness is. It's not in your ability to speak and cast out devils. It's in your union with love, which you are completed by. Because you're complete in love, now you have boldness. And there is no fear in love. Let's, let's, let's keep going. Uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Now, let's, let's pause. There is no fear in love. There is no phobia. The word does not change. There is no good fear or bad fear, but we've categorized it, so we need to hold on to it because it makes sense, right, Jenny? It makes sense to us. It makes sense. You know, if I, if I see a bear coming to me, I know I need to get the hell out of there. If you don't have fear, you think you'll stand still? Let no. Him, let him tear no, your limb for no, them? No, 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 no. It comes from knowing something about the bear or if no, anything else, knowing something about me. He's bigger than me. I can't win this fight barehanded. So I need to, I need to move to high ground. I need to move to, to, to something that's going to allow me to have, to have some kind of advantage. I'll come back and get him later. <laughs> with a gun. With a gun. But my point is, I do not have to respond to the... Now, remember, the fear might be present, but I don't, have to I don't have to run because I'm afraid. I need to move because I know something. It's hard for us to grab because we've been held so long by this, by this spirit that has taken us captive and made us all delusional because most of us are delusional because we live in the flesh. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the birth certificate that says David Kennebrew. Well, that's who I am. I did this document with lies registered in the courthouse. <laughs> Why is that? It is a lie. Why is it a lie? Because the day that God put Christ in me, I was birthed out of this into another person. Now, I, I mean, you can have Christ in you and not know you're another person. You can advocate Christ in you and not know you're another person. You can say you're a Christian and not know you're another person. And as long as you don't know you're another person, you will be subject to make fear-based decisions day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Someone, I remember one time when I was, <coughs> can affect your morale. <clears throat> and so as a, leader, <laughs> as a leader there, I said, you know, guys, uh, morale is subjective. He said, what do you mean? <clears throat> I said, well, I'm sitting here and I had a great morning and somebody comes in and says, guess what? Boom, 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 boom. And so what? Guess what happened? My morale goes right out the door with what they say. But if I come in in the morning <clears throat> and I'm feeling good and I'm, I, I, I had some things going on 
and somebody comes and gives me that news and say, okay, well, that's, we'll, we'll deal with that when it comes. I'll deal with that when, when, when time comes. I'm not going to let that bother me today. I'm not going to let that bother me now. Y- you follow what I'm saying? <clears throat> the fear does not have to rule over you because you know something. I, I'm, I'm carrying in my pocket the lottery ticket. It goes you play lottery. I'm ca- and I just, I just won a $10 million lottery. I'm holding this ticket in my pocket. No matter what you say coming into me that day won't bother me. Because <laughs> I know something you don't know. I got the ticket in my pocket and I just need to go cash it in. You follow me? I know something that keeps what you're saying to me to bring me anywhere on because I know something that I have that you do not. I'm carrying a hundred million, uh, what is it, a, a, a ten million dollar lotto ticket here, or whatever the, the lotto thing is. So I'm operating in a different knowledge. You might come and say, "Well, they're going to be laying off this week." I just heard it from them. I just heard it from my from from, from one of the manager. They're going to lay twenty five people off, and you one of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh man, that's too bad. I'm, I sure feel sorry for y'all. What do you mean, bro? I, 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 I got things working. <laughs> I, 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 I got this. Whew. Fear does not have to play a part in that because I know something. We don't live that way. Let's go. Okay, where are we? Okay, right here. And there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Now, that's, that's hold on. That word perfect in that verse, in that in verse uh, uh, 17 and verse 18 is the same perfect as in verse 17. Right. The word perfect doesn't change, just like the word fear doesn't change. Right. So he is saying, but complete love does what? Cast out fear. Doesn't cast it out. Let me, let me show you something. <clears throat> Can't see That's darkness. Way. That's light. When light comes into a room, is darkness still here? No. Okay. It, consumes it. it consumes it. What we call swallows it, it swallows it up. It swallows it up. It swallows it up where it no longer affects you. You walk into a dark room, you click a switch, the light comes on, the light swallows up the darkness. Love swallows up Fear or consumes it, as you said, Jenny. It consumes it. Is it there? Yes. Because if you turn the light off, it comes back. But in consuming it, it takes it in and it has no effect on you. So when fear attacks you, when you turn on or move into who you are spiritually, it swallows up the fear. Let's go, sweetie. Thank you. Okay, because fear has torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. There's that word perfect again. And fear, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, conclusion. Are you ready for the conclusion? Yeah, I think I am. There is no fear in love. There is no good fear, just fear. Mm -hmm. And when there is fear, love is made... When there is fear, love is made perfect. Love is not not made made perfect. perfect. Right. And if we are not complete in love, we walk in the flesh even though we have love abiding in us. Mm -hmm. When we lack this knowledge, we are subject to be tossed to and fro by every attack of the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Let's stop this justification and fascination with the spirit of fear and its desire to desensitize us to the person of Christ Mm. and his process of desensitization. As a new creation believer and see-thrower, we have uh, birthed in us all all that we need to be to live above live through and cast out fear Mm -hmm. let's give it a place called good fear no the world might do this but you and i don't have to conform to this world romans 12 and 2 Mm -hmm. and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will oh, of God. Oh, there they were perfect again. That's right. Complete and mature. Okay. Jenny, mm-hmm. we're going to close with you. Did this answer your questions at all? It did. It absolutely did. I, I, and I'm, I, think back, I think back over some things that have gone on in my life in the last year 
<clears throat> and and knowing some of those things and how I dealt with it through the spirit mm -hmm. uh, confirms all of this, uh, especially this piece over here uh, when we were going through the illusion and deception, when the emotions get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, there were times in a very difficult situation where emotions just overtook me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the spirit told me, you can have control over your emotions. Mm -hmm. And when I was allowed, or when I allowed myself to take control of those emotions, they stopped. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see through um, some of this and be able to understand that what was going on mm -hmm. was God's will mm -hmm. and to help me see it in a different manner. Good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I think, okay. beloved, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for joining us this week in Sunday Fellowship. We trust we'll be able to fellowship with you again next week. Uh, but until then, let the Holy Spirit renew your mind to who you are in Christ. Let the Father's life in you become the person that you're going to come. But when it comes, you walk in who you are as this other person, and it is swallowed up immediately. Your mind clears up immediately, and you can begin to live in victory. And I'll even, I, I, the, the word to me, victory, really is shallow compared to the, the magnitude of this other person that we are. It's really shallow compared to another person that I am living in the, in the body that you see on this screen. But anyway, with that said, God bless you. We trust the Father. See you again next week. Have a great week in Christ. Amen? Amen. <laughs>